Hello there. Today's video is the last of my pumpkins for fall 2023. So just some fall home decor DIYs that I can't wait to share with you. I'm Whitney with Crafty Thoughts and Whatnots. So let's jump into the craft room. Jeez, I'm going too fast. All right, so the first uh, first project today is, this is an old pumpkin I have. Obviously you can see the stem is missing here. Uh, I believe I got it on clearance for some crazy deal at Michael's many years ago, but yeah, the stem's missing. So we're gonna use that and we're gonna use this metal bottle cap from Dollar Tree. Those bottle caps are pretty popular, came out a year or two ago. I have quite a few of them. So I figured I will make a, probably like a little, like a tiered tray, but not really a tray. It's just a, it's like a stand. It's like a candle stand, you could say. So I need to make the top of the pumpkin flat. So I've got my trusty craft knife, which is technically a bread knife that I bought at a discount store that I used to cut styrofoam with. And I'm making the top of the pumpkin pretty flat. Um, in order to secure this little pretty body bottle cap here onto the top of the pumpkin, I needed to make sure I had a lot of surface area touching it. And I'm gonna use Star Bond. Um, I haven't used my Star Bond in a while, but I needed something that's going to adhere metal to pretty much anything. And Star Bond's pretty decent at that. Uh, if you need some Star Bond, I have an, uh, a link in my um, Amazon shop. I bought mine directly from Star Bond but I've been in trouble getting a hold of Starbond to see if I could get you guys a discount code. So it's linked in my Amazon shop should you want to take a peek at it. It's a pretty decent glue. I like it. And as you can see here, you can tap on it and it's pretty solid. It, you know, I use the regular glue. This one was the thick glue and then the accelerator and you're good to go. Now I'm going to add farmhouse to this because that is what I do and it's in my blood and it's just how I am. So I'm taking some, this is just a little bit of white chalk paint. This is, I think, folk art chalk paint that I have in a little, um, it's a little dip cup because it makes it more convenient. And I'm taking a chip brush and I am just sloppily placing this on here. So I'm going to make it look super distressed. And it's not the fact that it's going to look distressed. It's just going to look very thick and sloppy and, and, and patchy. And that's how I want it to look. I want it to look aged. And I, I, I didn't like the orange itself. That orange was a little bit too harsh for me. So we're gonna do that. Now, the gap between the bottle cap and the pumpkin needs to be covered and we're gonna use my favorite friend in the world here. Uh, covers up all the behind the scenes. We're gonna use Spanish moss. So I'm gonna just take a decent amount, little, 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 we're gonna put this in in like little sections so we can tuck it in between the pumpkin and the bottle cap. So I'm just applying some hot glue and I'm not being careful at all, which don't do this, okay? Don't be like me. Now, I don't remember burning myself on this project. <laughs> I think I burned myself later on in the video. I don't remember, but um, I'm just taking a, like a dowel or a skewer or something. You have a plastic pencil, a, a paintbrush, whatever you got. And I'm using that to kind of tuck that in between the two. So then once we get it all the way around, this is what we're working with. And I liked it and I love her and I think she's beautiful, but I felt like it needed a little bit more. So I went into my beautiful mounds of happy craft hoarding. And I found I had these little, uh, square plaques I got at Hobby Lobby, the wood pile. So it's a four pack I got for $4.99, I guarantee you I got it on sale or some sort of discount. And we're gonna take the uh, home decor wood tent that I love so much in the color walnut, and we're gonna have a happy time staining this. Now this wood tent is awesome. Now, two sides of this wood plaque had a very rough cut to it, and it just absorbed that wood tent. It just soaked it right up. So it was really dark on two sides, and I was like, I'm not really happy with that. Let me finish. We just put the wood tin all over. And then I left the top raw wood because we're gonna use glue and just, you're not gonna see it. So then in order to fix the, the two sides that were darker, I just kind of went at it with my little zip sander. It's like a finger sander. I have that also in my Amazon shop. Links in the description if you wanna take a peek at it. That's under project supplies. Or no, that's under tools. Project supplies is pretty much everything I buy that we off Amazon that we use to make things with. So this is the idea. We're gonna take this little plaque here and we're gonna put this little pumpkin on a stand. So it's more of a, I guess you could say a cake stand, but we're gonna use it as a candle stand or a candle holder or just a pretty little display piece. So with a little bit of tight blonde, uh, quick and thick and some hot glue, um, pretty much that's it. This was a pretty quick, I mean, pretty quick if you watch it sped up and have me explain it to you, it did not, it, it took me a minute to make it. I, I can't seem to make my stuff fast, guys. Like I try so hard and I get in there and I just, you know, I have fun and I kind of spread things out and I kind of, I have a TV on or I have some music on, but the crafting doesn't go fast for me. It never has. I just enjoy it. And then when I'm done, I get to reap the rewards, even though it may have taken me an hour. <laughs> but this one's pretty fast if you have the supplies ahead of time. 
And then, of course, just drying time. And that star bond glue dr dries pretty fast, so it shouldn't take you long. But tell me your thoughts. What do you think of this cute little... I, I want to say just a little uh, display. This is a little display stand. So on top of it being a pumpkin, I put another pumpkin on top, which that's another DIY you'll see. Another super fast and quick and easy. But that little green pumpkin is also in the video too. Look how cute they are. Now, now our second project for this video, I have this little box I got. Um, I believe somebody, uh, might have been my in-laws, went out of the country. I think, think that's German. It, was, it had candy in it. It had some sort of like candy thing in it. Now, so I'm taking off the nutrition label on the back, but this is a cute little wooden box. It's got little um, a little clasp on it and some pretty little hinges, and I couldn't throw it away, or I didn't want to use it, so I'm going to make her beautiful, and I'm going to do so with pumpkins, because that's how I roll. I kind of like pumpkins just a little. If you're new here, you know. I like pumpkins a lot. You're round. You're round pumpkins, baby. <laughs> so... I'm taking the same little uh, white chalk paint. You saw me sand it. Now I had to sand, I had to put some, you know, some elbow grease into that to get some of that um, writing off the top of it, that paint that was already on the box. And I just did this. This is all you see me do. Just one, maybe two coats of that. That's uh, folk art home decor white chalk paint. Now I'm gonna use my wood tint again, favorite kind, favorite color, walnut. And I'm going to use a baby wipe and I'm going to use the wood tint just on the sides of the box. Now I'm putting paint on the top and only using the tint on the sides and bottom of the box because I really wanted the wood grain to show. I love the color. I love when whites and natural wood, not even natural because I'm staining it, whites and woods go together. It's very neutral, but I love the way it looks because you can pretty much add anything to it and it's very, very effective for, this is a good base for anything you want to do in my opinion, for any holiday, any theme, neutral, and then you can start from here with your color. So what I'm gonna do here is I'm gonna add these uh, rub-on transfers that I got at Dollar Tree last year. I have seen many of them this year, so I know they have them this year, even though it, this is kind of late, so it's, again, my last pumpkin video. Um, now you see, I took the baby wipe and I kind of went over the white paint because we have some white pumpkins in these rub-on transfers and they kind of blended in, you didn't see them. So I took the baby wipe that I was using on the sides with the wood tint on it and I just kind of smeared them and kind of distressed the top of the white paint, gave it a little bit of color. And then here I'm just taking my wood, or wood, my uh, rub-on transfers, and I'm just kind of cutting them up and placing them on how I see fit and just making a little happy pumpkin collage. You know, basically this is what heaven is made of. It's little punkies everywhere. <laughs> now I got them where I want. Now I got this new roll of ribbon from Amazon because I cannot find the farmhouse stripe ribbon at Hot and Hobby at Dollar Tree anymore. That one was my favorite one. I'm gonna make a finger bow. And of course I have a bow tutorial in linked in my description that I made that shows you slowed down many different versions of a finger bow. You'll see me here take this one apart right now and then put it back together. I, I pull them apart constantly. It, it will get easier with time if you struggle with finger bows, but once you get the premise down, you'll see. I had a piece of uh, ribbon that I would take with me everywhere and I just practiced, practice, practice, practice. And even then, if I'm not happy with it, I will pull the finger bow out like three times and retie it. So right here, you saw me do it twice. And I'm still not, I'm still on the fence with it. I just, I love this ribbon. It's very cute. I think it's 30, I get 30 feet of it, but it is in my Amazon shop also. And I love the look of it. I got, I got it in black stripes and in red too. So you'll see the red one in the, in the Christmas videos I got coming up. I got some tree videos you're going to love. But this is a cute little box. So now I can set her out and just put all kinds of, I have no idea, you could put safety pins. I don't know what I'm going to put in it. I might not even put anything in it and I just look at it. <laughs> what, is, what did you do with it? I made it pretty so I could look at it. <laughs> That's what we do with these things, right guys? We just, we take stuff that we like, we make it over so that we can look at it. <laughs> now, this, uh, this one right here, our third project for the video, this is the one you saw a little bit earlier on my little pumpkin tray. Now, I, I bought this at Hobby Lobby last, no, Hobby Lobby, I keep doing that. It's Dollar Tree. I got this at Dollar Tree last year. And it's a decent heaviness. I think it's cement. I don't know what it is, but you could, you know, you could gain entry to someone's home, not legally with it, if you know what I mean. <laughs> so I'm gonna take my folk art and I've got Spanish moss, my favorite color green Spanish moss. And then I'm gonna use Java for the stem. I absolutely love this color green. It's, I've, I've used it in spring, summer, and now fall. You're gonna see it for Christmas. I love this color green. And I love green pumpkins. I like white pumpkins. I like all pumpkins. Yeah, I don't discriminate. Pumpkins are beautiful no matter what they are. Even the little knobby, warty, bubbled up, moly, you know, gourds. They're all, everybody needs, every pumpkin needs love. 
So I'm <laughs> painting this one green. And again, I love this color. So I just used a regular paintbrush. And then with this one, I was going a little bit slower so that I didn't get, you know, some, I didn't want to get the Java color paint on any of the green, but I wanted to make sure that the, the two seams came up together. So where the stems started, that was definitely brown. And where the pumpkin came to the stem, that needed to be green. And I just kind of gave it as many coats as it needed. It kind of was like a dry in between thing. And you can still see some of the white in there because it's got a lot of little grooves in it. But this is what we look like when we're all dried, beautiful colors. And what I'm gonna do here on top of it, which is why it doesn't matter, you can see some of the little white peeking through. I was checking to see if I had paint on my hands. <laughs> is we're gonna use this uh, Debbie's DIY Wax. This is a white wax. I get all my DIY products from uh, miltonsdaughter.com. Lori is an awesome individual. There is a link and a code in my description below should you wanna take a peek at her website. There's all kinds of stuff. If you watch any of my videos recently, I use a lot of her products and they make things amazing. Now this white wax is amazing. It's very uh, smooth, very clean. And I wanted to get it in all my creases and then I put a little bit extra here on top so I could get it in that little swirly part of the stem. And now the paint I use doesn't have to be sealed but the white wax is basically giving me that dusty farmhouse, you know, aged look that I was going for. And I love how it turned out. So I literally just took a little ceramic piece from the store, painted it two colors and put some wax on it. And I love this little pattern on here. This little Dollar Tree pumpkin was speaking to me. It's like a little sweater. It's like a little sweater basket. It's a basket weave pattern. And of that pattern, it looks almost like a sweater type thing. I don't I mean, let me know if I'm making any sense. <laughs> but I love how it turned out. You Let me know what you think. Also very quick and easy. Very easy. Very, very effective. Very, very good for giving gifts to those who love pumpkins. Or anything else ceramic you may find in the store. <laughs> Now this is our last DIY for this video and uh, this one's got a lot of steps but stick with me you're gonna love it. So I have a two-piece wreath ring that I got here. They're eight inch rings that I got at Hob... Man today it's say Hobby Lobby instead of Dollar Tree Whitney. Say it again. I got these two-piece at Dollar Tree. I used one in a previous uh, project some other time so I had one left over. Now I'm taking some raffia and I'm cutting it off of my big raffia bundle and I'm using some scotch tape to just tape the end of it to keep this little bundle together. And as you see here, I'm taking it and I'm wrapping it around the wreath. And as I'm holding it, this was very easy. It was also very fun too, because you know, anytime you start wrapping wire with any kind of twine or raffia or bows or ribbon or whatever, it's usually frustrating. This was not. I had a decent bundle grabbed in, I had a decent bundle of raffia I grabbed in my hands. And as I'm holding the left side, I put my thumb back over the top as I wrap it around these, uh, the entire, you know, ring. So all three wires, all three prongs, whatever you want to call them. Now I did have to do this, I think two more times. Um, but the last one, I had very little space left that I needed to fill. So it was like that amount that I took from my bundle was about half of the wreath. There's no way for me to guess how much I would need. Couldn't tell you. Same thing if you were going to wrap it with yarn or ribbon, just cut something that you think might work. And then if you have extras left over, then so be it, you know, tape it off, cut it down. So I put tape on that end, I cut it off and I'm using hot glue to secure it to the back. And then with the next little bundle here, you now here I'm holding it because the hot glue did need to take time to, to make sure it's solidified, make, make it hardened. And now I'm showing you, I'm taking my next bundle and I'm stuffing it inside the wraps from previous before. So it fits perfectly, no need to. And then basically I take my, uh, raffia and then wrap it around that to kind of secure it in and then keep going down the rest of the wreath. Now, this tiny little piece of space here I had finished this one off too. I grabbed a thinner bundle this time. So I knew that I, cause I had a, the same length of raffia. I just grabbed a thinner bundle and used this the same way I've used these other two, which were a little bit thicker. So you'll see here when a minute that's again to let the, the glue solidify. Instead of grabbing as many strands, I grabbed a much thinner amount of strands here and then started the same way with my tape and then wrapped them around and around and around and secured them on themselves. And I was a little worried that it might look a little, for lack of a better term, cheap. I didn't want it to look like I got it at Dollar Tree, even though I did. <laughs> I think the raffia is very effective for this. It's, it's a very good medium to use to wrap on these wreaths. It's not ribbon. You can't see the, fi the wire form underneath it. So with that aside, we are now moving on to the base of our sign. I have this tag that I got at Dollar Tree a couple years ago, but they have tags year round. So grab a tag shape if you want to follow along with this. And then here's some various different sizes and different uh, patterns of, of scrapbook paper that I've had. 
So should you try to recreate, pick something that you like, pick something that's comparable to your taste, your style, your theme. Now, what we're gonna do is we're gonna cover the back in craft paper, and this is a double-sided adhesive that I use. It's a scrapbooking adhesive. I use it for paper all the time. Hot glue is a little hard to use on a lot of things because you can see the hot glue through most papers. This is just crafting or shipping paper that I got at Dollar Tree in the you know school section or the office supply section. And this is what I do to all of the backs of my signs. If it has glitter or printing or anything else on it, I make sure that I have all of the edges covered in glue. That way I can take a nail file or sander off and it, you get a very clean edge. You just pull it downward away from your project and it basically cuts the paper where you would need to cut and you have the perfect edge. So that's why I need everything to look almost retail quality on the back. I don't want anyone to know behind the scenes. That's part of the, part of the, the illusion of making this cute little sign for your first yourself or for anybody. So now I'm gonna do the bottom half of the sign with this um, fall colored leaves and it wasn't big enough. This is a scrap piece of scrapbook paper. It's a scrap piece of scrapbook paper. It wasn't big enough. So I grabbed a 12 by 12 sheet of just some solid colors because I used to be an avid scrapbook scrapbooker, but you can get individual sheets of scrapbook paper at Hobby Lobby and Michaels. Um, they're like what, 59 cents, 99 cents, not, nothing bank breaking. And I just put that on the base because that's gonna be the border around our leaves. And now I'm gonna try using this little sponge with my Distress ink here. This is a color vintage photo because I wanted it to look aged and having a bright orange around something that I want to look farmhouse or aged or, or distressed wasn't working for me. Now the makeup sponge was okay. I Before I've used like a tissue and it's been a little bit harder. So I just picked the dang stamp up and rubbed it around the edges. That's what I ended up doing. I just rubbed it all around the edges. Now, sometimes you gotta be careful because if your stamp pads have a lot of ink in them, you can end up really slopping ink all over your project. So I've done that in the past too. That's why I tried to get the uh, the little spongy here and it helped. It's just, eh, I needed more. So now I'm taking the top part. Now I'm gonna use this. This is a pack of paper I got. It's all different types of wood wood slats that I got. It. I got this at Hobby Lobby. It's a 50, 50 pack of paper. It is a very thick card stack, but I love this wood color. So I needed, I wanted the top of the tag to look like it had like little wood panels on it. So this is a very thick card stock. So you'll see here there's paper flying everywhere. It's just, it'll be messy. It won't look right for a second, but just make sure as long as you have that adhesive around the edge of the paper and the edge of your project, you will be fine. And for some reason, if it comes up, then just stick a little bit of glue under there and everything be okay. Same thing, took my stamp pad, my ink pad, and I rubbed around the edges. And you can see here, this is the premise of my idea. If you didn't know by now, you saw the thumbnail of the video, it's gonna be a pumpkin. <laughs> Guess what guys, it's gonna be a pumpkin. Now, I cut the uh, fall leaf paper uh, to fit size so it has just a decent amount of border. So basically this is like scrapbooking 101, layering your projects, putting a little bit of ink on it. I thought about putting some cute little dots or lines around the outside, but I knew I was putting a pumpkin on there so I didn't want it to be too busy. So I just grabbed some of my chalk paint that I have off to the side. It's a white chalk paint, it's a folk art white chalk paint. And I just did kind of like a left and right and a up and down distressing. So I got this look to it, made me happy, made me so happy. And then with what was left on the paper or on my little cardboard here in my brush, I just added some to the raffia. I couldn't honestly tell you why I did that. I just felt the need to do it and I did. <laughs> if that makes any sense, let me know. Do you ever think like, hmm, let me try doing this? Like, why did I do that? I have no clue, but I did it and I like it. So there you go. Moving on. <laughs> now I'm taking this threatening looking tool that you could use to, you know, use in prison to, or lock picking or something. I don't know. And it's just, it's called an all. <laughs> I have one of those in my Amazon shop too. This particular one looks like one my mom used to use in the seventies, man. Um, it's got a big old wooden handle on it, but it's it's very effective for putting a nice, decent hole. You see the, the hole in the top of the tag needed to be back in there and it didn't rip the paper and it put a perfect little indent in there so it didn't look so bad. Now, taking my hot glue, putting it on the back of our little raffia colored wreath and looking here, I'm taking some of my stems from my old pumpkins. These, I've told you guys many times, I save those off of every pumpkin every year. And now I'm using a finger a file, a nail file here off to the side to kind of get the edging on the bottom of it right and I'll show you in a second. I wanted, I needed it to be kind of diagonal on one side and it had a dip in the other so I'm making it flat so it touches the sign and it touches the top of the wreath in a proper way so that it actually 
looks like it belongs and it has a good contact between the two part, you know, the two, the two surfaces. And then we glued it on and I'll show you here. You can hold it by hot glue. So she is on there and it is not coming off, but that was the reason why we're doing all this, you know, sanding off to the side. Now here is my plethora of gobbly stuff that I'm going to try to adequately describe. Now I grabbed my cheesecloth. I got this from Amazon. You can get cheesecloth anywhere, but I got this particular one from Amazon. And at first I was going to try to do like a rag thing. So I kind of put a little snip in it and I tore it. I cannot do this. I have seen people tear fabric and all kinds of stuff. And it just looks horrible when I do it. It's never even. And it always looks like somebody, like someone's dog chewed on it for 10 minutes. And then I used it. So I just got my, my little rotary cutter out and I cut these strips. And what happens is this is what I'm going for. So with my hands, I'm taking it from the, the, the clean cut version here. And I kind of just run my hands over it, through it, and it kind of frays it a little bit. And that's what I'm going for to make it look shaggy, to make it look, you know, shaggy, shabby, whatever. Now, with that being said, I'm pushing it off to the side. And technically, to be honest, I almost forgot to put it in the bow. Now I'm using two and a half inch ribbon from, um, this is craftoutlet.com ribbon in a mustard color. And then another craft outlet here is this green pattern, pl plaidish pattern. And then the pumpkins was an old fall ribbon I got at uh, Hobby Lobby. And I'm just going to do a layered thing. Now the bottom one here, I'm just pinching in the middle and we're going to use that one almost like a tail. And then my two one inch ribbons here, which I felt were just kind of odd to put together. I love how it turned out though. I've been recently thinking with my, with my ribbons, put stuff together that you wouldn't normally do. Now, I don't know why, but I didn't really think that the pumpkin went with the green, but I love it all together. Now here I want to layer these two. So I did an awareness ribbon shape. I put a little dab of glue between the tails and then again on the back of it. And that has been the easiest way for me to make these little classic bows. So this is a thicker ribbon also. I couldn't gather them all at one time. So I did the green bow first and then I tied it in a knot with some jute twine in the middle. Then I put the pumpkin bow on top of that, tied that in a knot behind it and then added the mustard two and a half inch ribbon to the back of it and just cinched them all together. So they're basically tied on individually with a piece of jute twine. Now I had to shorten the mustard a little bit because it's a little bit too long. And what I'm going to do here is I'm going to do like a little loop thing and I'm going to put the ribbon in the middle. So this is going to have a hanger on the back, but technically I wanted it for me to be a stand up piece, like a tabletop display or a shelf leaner. So I'm taking the loop and putting two ends through the, the sign and with the tails, I'm going to grab them through the end loop on one side, if that makes sense. I've, I've described this before in the past on smaller projects, but this is a bigger, bigger system. It is basically put the, the two loose ends through a hole and then with the loop on the other end, grab those tails through it. And then you have it, you have it cinched down. I tied a little knot back here. Should I sell this or give it away? And somebody who does eventually want to hang it, you have that ability to do so. I personally am going to use this, uh, leaning up against a window or a, or a wall on a shelf. I like the way it looks sitting up. It makes a good little vertical piece to any kind of like little fall display. Now we can't have pumpkins without tendrils and a piece of glue. <laughs> no. So most of the time I make my tendrils, this is exactly how I do it. I take the pit berry garland and I wrap it around a hot glue stick. So grab a piece of hot glue. This is a decent size too. If you have a smaller project, use a dowel or a pencil or even something thinner than that, a thinner stick or a, a pick, the stem of a pick of a flower. Now this ended up being perfect for coming apart, but then later I end up twisting it back together. So I should have left it together. But in any event, this is like kind of when you get ribbon or you get yarn and you can tell the manufacturer like ended it and then started a new one in the middle of your like spool. So they came apart perfectly and it's just what I had left of this one roll of pitberry garland in my stash. And I got them, I wrapped them around the hot glue stick, pulled them off. I got my little curly cues. And now as I bring you closer to the project, we're going to place my favorite little best friend, Spanish moss around the stem. And then I wanted to tuck the tendrils around there, but they weren't, it just wasn't working for me. So I tied them back together, kind of twisted them in the middle and I'm going to wrap them around the stem. And what I end up doing is having to wrap them a different way, but in any event, wrap them around the stem and then kind of put the glue down in there. And then I used, um, some sort of little tool here, a little plastic item to kind of push it down into the, to, into the moss to hide that. And now our last little piece here, I have some, uh, plate decor. It's a 10 count piece. You get 
these little words that got that at Hobby Lobby last year, five blessed and five thankfuls. We're going to use one of our thankfuls and I'm just going to place it on the top of the wreath. I'm even, I'm not going to, some, some of the things before I thought, oh, I could paint it a different color. No, I think it works great. And because of the way the, the color is behind it, I don't think it needs to be painted or anything else like that. I think it's very, very Thanksgiving-y. Gives you that great vibe. Now, back to our cheesecloth that I almost forgot. If you see here the way I'm gathering this, I'm bringing the points back to my, my middle finger. So I have a very shaggy uh, bow and it hangs and it, it drapes. That's what I want to say. Drooping. Drooping is a very, it's a very gross word. I want a very droopy bro, droopy bow. No. It's, it's a dra the way it, it drapes and falls is very, very pretty. It's very, very French, very country, very farmhouse, very beautiful. And so I'm taking two extra pieces that were a little bit shorter and just kind of laying those on top of the loops that I made. So those are going to be our tails. Okay. And then I keep shaking it to see how she uh, drapes in the proper way. And now I'm going to lay it down and I need to get a piece of jute twine. And we're going to do the same thing we've done to every bow. And we're going to just cut a piece off. And we're going to use this to tie everything together. We're going to cinch it in the middle. So I'm going to lay this down and I'm going to put my bow over the middle of it and just tie a couple square knots. What I do here, which is not slow down because it, it ends up being a mess. I'm taking the extra pieces of twine after I put a knot in it and I'm wrapping one one way and one the other opposite way around the middle to make it look at, like it has a thicker center. The, the center of a bow for me is like the perfect little piece. It's cinched in the middle and then the bow fluffs out and it's very, very pretty. So because I tied very tight knots, I wanted to make sure that the center of the bow was, was thick enough. Because this, you will see it is a focal point in the middle of our main bow piece. And I'll show you here. I needed that little brown piece in the middle to be decent, a decent size. So wrap those around, tie it again. Now we're going to glue it to the center of our bow. And the, some of the tails were just a tiny bit long. So here you'll see me fussing with it and fluffing it and messing with it and making her beautiful again. And then just cut them how I see fit, how I thought they would look great. Now some stuff is being covered, some stuff is being layered. That's part, that's part of the process. It's part of the gorgeous pile of stuff that becomes your favorite. So there we have a cute little tag. I mean, little tag sign turned out great. And again, this is one of those last minute things where I'm like, I have all these supplies. I think I can do this. And again, also save those stems from your gourds. They are so effective. I, I mean, you could use anything. I was also thinking if I didn't have a stem that would work with my little stash there, I would have probably cut the top off of a painter's stick. You know, the little handle part of a paint stick would look great in there or any other kind of stick or twig or, or you know, stem from something else. Maybe even in the backyard, if you have a stick or a bush, any of that would look great. It's just those stems from actual gourds are so effective. Now you, you don't, you can, you cannot tell me, you do not know that that is a pumpkin. <laughs> it's so beautiful. And I am so thankful that I love pumpkins. Aren't you? <laughs> I love it. So this, that's it for today, guys. We had four little DIYs, but they are my last. I, I, again, this is a little late. Christmas is coming. I already have the things planned out and setting on my desk and I've recorded some things, but I've had some issues. I've been a little bit slow, a little bit behind, but I'm still here and I'm still you know, chipping away at things. So here's four DIYs. This is the last of the pumpkins. I am sad to see them go. I am sad, but I got a good amount of pumpkins out this year. Tell me what you think. Have you liked all the pumpkin project projects I put out? And pretty much that's all I did was pumpkins, but I, I did it because I can, <laughs> and that's what I wanted to do. <laughs> but Tell me what you think about these things today. I know everyone's moving on to Christmas. I'm not decorating for Christmas yet because as of today, it's basically almost the day before Halloween. So fall is staying out and that's how it's going to be. But I will have Christmas videos for you coming. Lots of trees, lots of bells, lots of beautiful things. But tell me what you think about these four girls. It's so beautiful. It's so pretty. So thank you so much for being with me. Thank you for joining me. I have a coffee page. Uh, should you feel like you've learned something or you want to support me, uh, it helps my channel grow, helps me continue buying supplies. Uh, there's a link in my description for that. I appreciate it. It's always appreciated, never required. With that being said, here's the end of my spiel. I love you more than I can possibly say in words. Many hugs, happy crafting, and I'll see you in the next video. Bye-bye for now.